Let's go to the Independent Women's Forum Director of Policy, Hadley Heath Manning. You know, Hadley, you say what you will, Joe Biden and some of the, you know, flubs and comments and biting his wife's finger and all that. He holds on. He hangs on. And maybe, maybe um, when, when push comes to shove, a lot of Democrats weigh that and say, all right, maybe he's our best hope. But what's going on here? I, he's always been the, the biggest figure in that center left lane. He doesn't seem to have a lot of competition there because we've seen a lot of Democrats running to the left of Joe Biden and grappling for that far left position. So they're having an inter-party struggle right now. But of course, as we get closer and closer to the general election next November, and it's coming at us fast, uh, people from both parties, whether they're running for president or for Congress, will make that shift to the middle to try to appeal to those swing voters in their district. And of course, Joe Biden will, will be no different right now. I think he's trying to position himself as someone who can be a uniter for Democrats and unite them against President Trump. You know, Adel, it's interesting that he is considered the most moderate in the bunch. Um, and I get that okay. because some of them are pretty extreme. But he still wants to raise taxes a lot over the next 10 years. I think about three and a half trillion dollars, dramatically less than, let's say, Bernie Sanders or Elizabeth Warren. But, you know, that would still take the, the, the corporate rate from 21 percent to 28 percent. It would it would, you know, rejigger the, the top rate and push it back up to close to 40 percent. It would it would have a lot of effects that a lot of Americans might be surprised with. And I'm wondering that's tailor made for Republicans are going to say at the very least, the least of these guys is going to hike taxes. How does that play out? Oh, the economy is certainly something in President Trump's corner uh, heading into an election year, especially as we saw in the last jobs report, the labor market continues to tighten. Americans are um, feeling more confident um, than ever in recent years when it comes to their you know, consumer spending. We're having a great holiday season. So Americans are optimistic about the economy. And if the economy holds strong uh, through November of next year, that's going to be something very difficult for Democrats to run against. And in terms of other policy matters, you know, first of all, impeachment is looming so large and it has has had the predictable polarizing effect on our politics. It's it's upsetting, uh, I think, to many voters in the middle to see people run to the corners and run to their extremes um, and look across the pond at the UK election. There's another example of when one party goes too far, um, they overplay their hand and, and and the results are bad for them. So I think Democrats are, are heeding this when they support Joe Biden. You know, Adley, I caught this New York Times examination about how the country is doing with this economic recovery and in the battleground states, the six or seven largely that the president one last time, um, they're doing much better than they were when he was elected, but they're not doing as well as they were about 18 to 24 months ago. And th so the argument goes something like it's how you live now, how you see things now. And the argument was that it's it, they're, they're going to be tough states for the president to win again. What did you think of that? Oh, I think absolutely. I mean, when it comes to economic data, just like anything else, there's a hundred different ways to splice it. Democrats are going to come with their best talking points and Republicans are going to do the same. And ultimately, it's going to be about, I think, two different visions, um, not just for our economy, but for our society and for our government um, that will be very, you know, in very sharp contrast next year in, in November of 2020. And people just have to decide, you know, when it comes to these issues, we saw health care, the number one issue in 2018. I think it's going to remain the number one issue in 2020. And so Republicans have to present their very, you know, c contrasting vision from Medicare for all, something I believe voters are souring on. Um, but people want to know, what are you going to do next? You know, it's certainly one thing to look back at the progress we've made so far in the last, you know, several years and contrast the Obama administration and the Trump administration. But those things are sort of backwards looking and, and Americans are going to be forward looking, saying what happens next. All right. Thank you very much. Hadley. Good seeing you again. Thank you.